What does a New York fashion show and a temperature sensor in a guinea pig cage have in common? My guest today has the answer with some kid-proof IoT devices. Let's get personal computing with Peli de Alla. Pelly, welcome. Welcome to Microsoft Reactor in, in Redmond. Thank you for inviting me. Is it exciting to be back on campus after a... I always <laughs> exciting to be on campus. <laughs> so I'm an IoT person. Anyone who's watched any of my streams or videos, I do a lot of internet things. And IoT, it's, it's hard because you have lots of complex hardware, very fragile components, lots of wiring. Um, but also, it's a thing that kids like. Kids like the tactile nature of IoT products. They've got something they can code in their hand. And you're telling me you've kind of solved these problems with kids and got IoT devices that are not only kid-friendly, but also programmably kid-friendly. I don't know if we solved it, but we have something that's pretty good uh, that we rolled out last year that's called JagDAC. And JagDAC is a, a new system to create accessories for electronics. Um, and in this case, we have a demo using this one here? Uh, the microbit. So the microbit, if you're not familiar, is a, the BBC microbit was rolled mm -hmm. out, and it's a microcontroller for for classrooms and kids in elementary. This is the one that in the UK they gave, they gave like a million of them to year seven kids. Yep. What's that? Same as I think grade six here in um, in the US. So they, they literally gave a million of these. One to million, kid, yeah. yeah. To kids to learn how to code. And they've sold many millions since then. So yeah, um, these and uh, Microsoft uh, runs the MakeCode editor, it's a block based editor mm -hmm. for the microbit. So we've got a long history there around making it easier to program uh, microelectronics, like the microbit. Uh, and then what's new here is this green uh, extension here. Yeah, this is the uh, add-on board we've got here, which is just the connection of the microbit just kind of slides into. It's just slotted in, yeah. um, and it's called JagDAC. Mm -hmm. And what you see is that we have you know, these connectors with three pins here, and then we've got these really nice cables, yep. and two sensors. Chunky. We got a button and a slider. So if I press this button, Oh, oh, if you press hot. the button, the microbit is programmed to, whenever a button is connected, to show a random uh, random icon. And then if you do the slider, it will kind of drive the screen and play a little sound. Oh, yeah. It's quite quiet, but uh, I guess it's a tiny speaker on board but, in the, in the microbit in there. But that's... We didn't have to program beforehand that a, pl a button would be connected. We just say, well, if, if you see a button connected, mm. and that's the novelty of JagDAC, is that it's kind of a plug and play experience, just like when you plug in your keyboard, but at a much smaller electronic level in the sense that it's plugging in a single key rather than it's plugging, plugging in a, a single key that a whole keyboard. This looks fairly sturdy the way you plug this in, and it's designed for kids. So and that's a I new were, cable. So if I were to be like a kid and just go, go uh, for it, <laughs> it didn't break. It didn't break. And oh, uh, we, learned, <laughs> we learned it the hard way that traditional electronic cables can be very finicky and tricky, and you can break mm -hmm. them easily. Yeah. And for this project, uh, we had our hardware, hardware engineer design a new cable. And the new cable is meant to be friendly to regular 21st century humans and little humans. <laughs> little humans, uh, yeah. You know, it's reversible. It creams. Uh, so there's a, like this feeling that it's in. Uh, so reversible, can, so I can put it on this way around. One way, and you'll see. And the microbe is going to check it. I press the button. I unplug it. Turn it around. Plug it in. And it's back on. Um, nice. Because yeah, I mean, USB cables, they're, they're a pain in the back. No, one, two, one, two three. three. Always yes. the third way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and kids don't, don't do that. I mean, I've got a 10-year-old, and she hates they USB hate cables because they never go in. Daddy, help me. And, and they're trained at USB, them. and there's yeah. a lot of other cables in the electronic space that are that are much more tricky, GST and so forth. Mm. And they get ripped out, and it's annoying. So so a lot of there was a lot of work around this cable, and also the connector on the on the electronic side is is the PCB. That means you you don't have to add the connector. It is cut at the factory. Um, okay. It is part of the 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 it is part of the PCB board. So there's so not there's like a, a USB C, there. for example, in there where you've got a microchip and you have to have the right chip for the right type of USB connection or what have you. This is just literally. It's wires. part of the it's part of the you of know the, the green circuit board there. Yeah. So when you so, get a PCB printed, it's just there. Yep. Nice, nice. This seems. Really cool and relatively simple. I always hate to use the word simple. It, it's, uh, this seems relatively simple. <laughs> so what's the history behind this? Where did this all come from? Why, why did we invent this? So we, we have a long history of working with the microbit. Mm -hmm. So the microbit, we provide a, you know, a great experience online and we control how it works. But uh, the accessory ecosystem is a bit more 
uh, you know, diverse. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted was a, a better experience around bringing in sensors and kind of a, an experience that's more modern around you plug things in, something happens, you can read the data, you can find the code that drives it. And if you buy from different manufacturers, they all work the same. The same way if you buy different keyboards, it'll work the same, different mouse. A mouse is a mouse, it behaves like a mouse, and so forth. And we want the same experience here. If I plug a button, it should act like a button, and I shouldn't have to download different code libraries and so forth. Right, yeah, you don't get like the whole package management experience you get with, like, with Python, with pip, or Rust, with, with crates. You don't want that with... with uh, you just want it to work. Yeah, and, and, an eight-year-old's using this, they want to be able to go, drag the code in for a button. They yep. don't want to have to go, oh, I've got to go to this URL to download this package. That's just... And from yeah. different vendors or different versions. The last thing we wanted was simulation. Mm -hmm. It's very key in the classroom to be able to simulate virtually your devices before putting the code in the actual hardware. You might not have enough hardware or, you know, it's more slower. So yeah. in this case, we can simulate all the JackDAC modules in the browser. You can test all your code against that and then download it to the hardware. Which is so, so important. And I don't want to get on my political high horse here, but my wife is a teacher and we do not fund education enough. And this is a global problem. It's not specific to any one country. We do not fund education enough. So you, if you're lucky, a classroom may have one kid. So the fact you can do everything online for free. Yes, you, for free you unlock a lot of students. Yeah, yes. it means everyone can do it. And then once they've done whatever they're doing, they can actually put it on. And hardware. think about your dev loop. You know, if you have to test, if your fridge goes, you know, if your fridge uh, is unplugged and goes above a certain temperature, you want to simulate it because you don't want to stay in the freezer <laughs> waiting for the buzzer to uh, to ring for a few hours. So, so there's also a lot of value, even from a professional point of view, to be able to simulate the whole environment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you, you said you we're, we're doing a lot of work with Microbit. We wanted to get this going. What was kind of the first ideas, the first use cases? The first use case was a fashion show a fashion in New show. York. Okay. Um, at the I think the Brooklyn Library, and uh, it was a school of fashion, and we got invited to put electronics in it. And one of the things that we, you know, there was, you have to route all these cables in, mm -hmm. the, in the garment. Uh, the garments, they remove everything before the show because they're going to go and dry, dry clean and dry press. Yeah. So you have to be able to unplug everything and replug everything very quickly. Which is one of the uh, fun things with wearables is you've got to have that ability to to take things off, yes. don't you? Um, I actually did a show a while ago where I put an LED panel on a T-shirt and with a microphone, text-to-speech, and as you'd say things, you get subtitles. But the first thing I thought of was, this is going to be Velcro. I've got to be able to take this off because yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to wash my $35 LED panel and have it break. So I guess that's one of the, the, the troubling things with fashion and electronics. There's a lot of challenges with you know, the human body. Mm -hmm. uh, but we learned a lot, and that was, uh, you know, an intern, uh, James Levine came in. This is, you know, Jack Dack is, is a big team effort in, in research and also with the Makehood team. I've got to um, ask this, actually. You said James Devine. Yeah. So. Ja is there any relation between... Well, initially, yes. <laughs> so yeah. Jack, basically, Jack Dack, he named it after himself. Well, there was some, you know, cryptic acronym, but it really made no sense after the project evolved. So we liked the name, we kept it. <laughs> uh, but it means nothing. Um, okay. But then kind of moving from there, obviously, fashion to school kids. Yeah, what? obviously, you know, we, we've worked with the Microbit Foundation and Make Code. Mm -hmm. So our first kit that is available is, is for Make Code in the sense that it's, it's a set of Jack Dack modules that you can use in, in the classroom and use. We've got buttons, sliders, rotor encoders, light sensors. So what we've got um, here, we've got... So and we've got a Microbit adapter. So, so this is the... Okay. We call that a jack adapter, and it's <laughs> jack adapter. <laughs> right, you can Maybe see it cool. on slots. Okay, so right. that's just the standards in there. That's the. It's very typical for the micro bit, and it slots it in. In you, so on the micro bit, the connectors here, you've got zero, one, two, three volts and ground. So that's numbered connectors with three volts and ground. So and there's power. all the pins in between. The, the little ones are, you know. Yeah. We yeah. tap into pin twelve, so one of them. Right, and then, uh, got and then you slot it in, and then now you can basically talk Jack Dack uh, from that. Slot it in, and it just yeah. works. I'm not rebooting. I've never rebooted anything. It's still plugged in. No, you in. don't have to reboot. Just plug and play. Yeah. And then, so you've got the button. We've got the the slider, and then I guess these here are the kind of yeah. The so you the got camp. a little, you know, LED ring. These are the the typical NeoPixel. So the RGB. Yeah, they're programmable RGB LEDs. So uh, you you've got. I think, what was this one? Uh, there's a magnet sensor, you know, if you want to do like a, a door. Uh, okay. A burglar detector. So you stick it, just like glue a magnet to a door, yeah. and then as that comes into contact, nope. you get a. You a know signal, that it's closed. Yeah. Which is. Or, you know, if you, if you run a car between two magnets, you can do a, a timing gate. 
you can measure time, then measure oh, speed. Okay. So the whole bunch of little activities we can do in the classroom with that. So you could even um, attach a little bit of metal to a kid's shoe or something and get kids doing races and just yep. time between time between the two. For example. If you've got yep. long enough cables. Cool. And then this is the rotary encoder. So it's just a typical potentiometer type. It the rotary encoder, you know, typically requires some some specific firmware to, you know, read the read the line and decode that. Mm. And that's basically abstracted away. Now we just receive the position of the rotary encoder. So, so every single module has like a degrees almost. You got from zero degrees to three sixty. It's a position. Kind of position um, so every module runs a little microcontroller and um, talks a protocol. Uh, so sends messages over this uh, over the JAGDAC line. Okay. So if we look here, we've got the rotary encoder, we've got the big knob we twist, and then there's a little chip yes. on here. So that's a little microcontroller. Yes. Uh, and then that connects. So geeking out a little bit, you've got three connections here. I'm guessing that's power, ground, ground, power, and then one data. data. Yes. So for those IoT enthusiasts like me, under the hood, what's the, the magic here? So the power line is 5 volt regulated. Mm -hmm. And on the data line, it's a UART based protocol. So it's a single line UART based protocol. Basically, you take the line down, then you kind of take over, send your message. Everybody receives. And then, uh, and then the next one can send a message over the line. OK. Um, OK. So if I have these two connected, this one knows that this one's sending a signal because yes. this one has said I'm sending. So this one switches off, sends the data, they kind of take Just turns. And on data. the same line, starts receiving the packet. In general, these are, we call them, this is an architecture very similar to servers and clients. Mm -hmm. These are servers. Right. They send data. And uh, this is a client that's kind of talking to these servers. You can see the sensors as servers. OK, um, so you kind of think, in, think about like in web terms, you might have a web, a web application actually we can that's see talking it. to multiple different um, REST APIs, it's kind of like that. This is the web application. These are the multiple REST APIs. Kind of think about that. Exactly. OK, so you got it up on here. Yeah, so I connected uh, through WebUSB. Now, in the browser, you can connect to uh, and this, my mouse. This, this is all in, in the browser, isn't this it? This is all in the browser. So again, thinking about in the education <coughs> space, if you've got kids with Windows laptops, it just works. And I guess Chromebooks as well. This Anything that has a browser that, so you browser. know, Edge, Edge or Chrome. So Chromebook, it would work as Safari. well. Safari, anything that supports WebUSB for the micro bit. iPads. I know some classrooms have iPads. Uh, they don't have the. They don't have ah, a USB course, Yeah, you don't have the USB yeah. cable, do you? Yeah. Yeah, things you like could Chromebooks. do Web Bluetooth. We don't support that. Uh, so you can see here, it's it's a digital twin of what the the button, or you know, you can see the slider. So what's going on here is that. Um, Okay, so we're actually seeing live on screen. The messages here are routed from the micro bit mm -hmm. into the browser, and the browser is interpreting also the messages. So That's everything we do <laughs> that here, is really, really cool. we can do also in the browser. Because you think in like a traditional IoT scenario, to do that, I would have to build, you know, get my Arduino, for example, I have to plug it in, and I have to write code myself to get the data onto something. Oh, yeah, no. And you're saying, no, nah, no, nah, we don't have to do that. We don't care about that. We'll and, it just works. You know, let me let me connect this rotor encoder here. OK, so you're just plugging another. And, and it, it pops, pops up. up. Yeah, and, okay. it's, um, and it's moving. <laughs> and if I <laughs> unplug it, I'm if sorry, I unplug I, I, it. I don't get very excited. But this is. It's gone. Oh, no, sad. That's, for, that's uh, really, really cool. But if we bring it back, and also it advertises it. So there's a catalog, and you know that. Uh, you know, this is the model, mm -hmm. and it's also telling us that. So we have this uh, LED here, and it's, yeah. you know, it has this identify feature where uh, okay. it blinks and tells us, oh, yeah, that's me, you know, because we need to correlate who's who since this is a bus, right? Everybody right. can be connected. So if randomly. I take another button, for example, I've got another button here, yeah. plug in another button, and I don't want to know which button's which. Uh, I've got cables here. And you can connect it from, you know, from any of those. You can connect, you can piggyback on this, for example. So I can literally, I can, so I've got, I've got the rotary encoder. I've plugged my cable in. Yeah. Doesn't matter which way around. Plug in another button. And bang, it appears there. And then if you identify. Just, either you do this. So and I do figure this. Out who's and that who. one flashes. And I do this. That one flashes. But if you do the identify thing. Yeah. That's. This is just bananas. Now, of course, this is, this is absolutely this maybe is I don't have a button. So what I can do is I can simulate it. So now this is a browser-based button, and you can see the micro bit is responding to it. So because even even though you don't, don't physically have the button, this one is sending a messages, and this this the micro bit thinks there is a button on the line. This uh, is just this is genius. So you can you can simulate um, everything. So literally anything I could get in. 
so when I move when I move this physical one, we get the same thing. I move the physical one. Yeah. And this almost looks like a kind of a spaceship shape, kind of climbs its way up. But you're now do, you now do the same thing with the virtual one. Yes. And I get the same. Yes. So we can simulate everything. At the lower level, it gets you know you can kind of look at all the devices you have connected and you know devices have services. You know the button service has um, a pressure. Oh yeah, one. See? So that's kind of on yeah. and off as a pressure. It tells you how you know how often streams of data. It, it, there's like events, you know, up and yeah. down. So we actually okay. So if I uh, as I'm tapping See. it down, the down goes up, and I release the you up goes up. Yeah. So if I'm programming against this, it's not just did I press a button. It's I can do something on the button down, and something on the button up. Typically, a, a button is a you know it's a reactive thing. So you mm -hmm. you really want to tap to events. If you think about the browser, you get button events. You don't get a mouse. You know. You don't get whether you're pressed or not. You don't pull the browser. Cool. Okay. So we've seen these devices. We've seen this all through the web. Uh, you know, we've seen I press a button and something happens on the screen. But what about writing code? Yeah, let's build Should, something. So yeah, let's, actually um, build, let's very quickly build something. We can build something. We've got a bunch of options to to code, make code. We got JavaScript. If you're a web dev, you can do hardware now, .NET Python, and, okay. and even more esoteric things like microcode, which is. Microcode, that's coding actually. on a handheld. On one of them. Coding yeah. on one of them. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I think we need to do a whole separate show right. on that one. Make code, uh, let's do make code. is the let's obvious do make one. Code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug here. Um, and I'm going to open make code. The reason oh, I do sad that. Noise. <laughs> right, so this is make code for microbit. Yeah. Um, and we'll create a new project. Mm -hmm. And in the new project, I'm going to add Jagdak. It's not you know, out of the box plugged in, but here we go. We add it. Which kind of makes um, sense because you don't want to have the whole thing full of all the Jack Jack stuff if you're just doing a basic. But you're going to recognize something here. Yep. It's kind of the trimmed down version of the of the dashboard. So that's where we could add the simulators and all that. So. Yes. So it's just you know we've removed a lot of the Chrome. So instead of using the native button, what I can do is I can say, oh, I want a button. Where is it? No, I can okay. say button. Okay, button. No, I can do a button, and that's it like tells me, uh, you want to add the blocks. Oh, all right, so you don't have to know which one to yeah. add. You click the button. Okay, sure. I want the blocks. And uh, if I go now in my in my blocks for modules, I can see that I have blocks for button. Right. So uh, let's play a sound, and the sounds are built in. You know, Microbit has some really cool blocks now that you can do this. And if you now... Okay, nice. we, we're going we're gonna to show something so that, because um, we're showing something and playing a sound, but let's maybe not do sounds, which is easier to capture on camera. Uh, so when I'm going to press the button, it shows, shows the heart. heart. Shows the heart. Right. Nice. Pretty basic. Yeah. Uh, but you've got the simulator. So you said, if I had this set up with a button, I press the button, it does that. Yes. So let's yes. do that. So we're going to connect the device. Yep. Uh, and you know this is the web USB flow in microbits. I'm connecting to a little bit complex because I guess permissions, but this is you doing this in the classroom. This is the bit the teacher. Well, the browser is you know. Do you want to let the browser connect to any device? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's yeah. asking you your permission. Yep. And what I'm going to do is unplug everything here and just keep a button. Okay, let's move these out the way. So it's still downloading. Okay, so that's there. We've so got the one button plugged in. It's downloading. Download completed. Yeah, it did fail to download. It's I passed the demigods. <laughs> yeah, I think it was still probably connected to the previous page. OK, so it's there. And you can see now we are talking to an FL49. So before it said a simulated button, now yeah. it's an FL49. Right. So if I press this button here, if I actually do it, I'm here. I've got this button. No, it's still, oh, it's still running your program. So hold on. So in the old program, but I'm seeing the button light up. Though. Yeah, I haven't screen, downloaded it, so it's running the old program, but this one is sending data. Now, here, if you press the button, the heart shows up here. OK, so in the simulator, it's showing our program. But even so, even though the device is running and not something older, in the, the simulator is picking up me press the button. Because it receives it, it bound to this hardware button. Right, it, it, gotcha. You know, yeah. the problem is you, cannot have, you can only have one head on the body. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> either this is the head and the brain, or this is the brain. Now, what yeah. I can do is download. So now we download this to the device. And now we're sending this program into the micro bit. Um, so you know, and this takes, takes, And now when you press heart. So now if I do this, I've got this here. I've got the button. I press the button. There and we then go. my heart appears from pressing the button. Yes. Nice. And it's l as easy as that. I don't want to say. as easy as that. I know that. there's a bit of quirk trying to get it all connected. But for 
eight, nine, ten year old in the classroom. This is well simulation of possibility. They can simulate it, and then when the teacher comes around with, here's the hardware, and, this, and plug it in. Plug it. And if it's a slider, it behaves as a slider. If it's nice. a temperature sensor, what do we have here? Uh, magnet sensor. Yeah, it's if it's a light sensor, sensor, it will show up and give you value. So there's there's yeah. a whole, you know, being able to see the sensor value is very useful when you're writing the program. So that's yeah. okay. And, and just thinking of just how advanced you can get this, you've got a little gadget over there, the big one. Can I just yes. look at this? So this, I mean, this is a meaty bit of kit, but this is just literally bolting these together using. I guess big bolts rather than cables, and we've got so many different things we can do. Oh, is there like a standard for this or something? Right. So there is uh, there is a shape system, you know, kind of a shape mm -hmm. design system for the the modules. Uh, that means the the holes are on a grid, and the holes are connected. So some holes are connected to you know ground. We, remember, we have three pins. We have ground, uh, yeah. power, and the data line. And if you close up on these, I mean, if you close up really a lot, you'll see there's little, um, I see, there's yeah. little symbols. There's a plus, a minus, plus a minus. And, and then two rows that shows you data. So these are basically the same as the three pins on yes. the connector. So rather than having to put cables in, I can build something. And they're on the grid. And they have a standard size. And that means, which you know, is specified, it means you can start having fun building some kind of weird breadboard and screw everything together. Which means you don't have to use cables. Nice. Um, so yeah, if you want to build a more advanced project, it's going to stay in the classroom to monitor the the temperature for the school guinea pig or something. Yeah, you could actually build. Yeah, let's a plug more it in device. and see what this guy has in in stock. So I'm gonna I'm gonna connect. So if I literally just is there a? So we're gonna kill our simulator and uh, let's plug on the side here. So I just we just plug in one cable into this entire. Array. And here we go. Bang. And we have all the things. We got three sliders. So we got. Spin the thingy. We got temperature, humidity here, pressure sensor, uh, magnetic switch, thermocouple. So Which that's your barbecue sensor. Barbecue. You know, you <laughs> put it in your barbecue. Yeah. Uh, so teaching kids to, to grill steak. Awesome. Yeah. This is all really, really cool. Uh, it, I love this. I'm a huge fan of ways we can make educating kids cheaper, easier, more accessible, especially in computer science. So this is phenomenal. So how how'd you get started? If somebody wants to get started with this, wh where do they go? So the easiest way to get started is to go to uh, the JagDAG website. And we'll stick a link in and, the, the show yeah. notes below. And uh, you will, uh, there's a link to the Kid and Bot uh, Kid A, which is the first kit that you can buy the hardware from. Which is the first one we looked at with yep. all these bits here. And then while your kit is shipping, you can do everything online in MakeCode using the simulators. Which is microbit.makecode.com yes. or something, isn't it? Yeah, again, we'll put and a link to that in, in the show. If you look into uh, this area, you'll see that in client programming, there's uh, there's a ton of projects that are already done for MakeCode, extensions, so great for documentation. Kids to get started and actually seeing yeah, if you go initials. into any of them and you click uh, try and make code, it'll open up and make code. This is it'll, brilliant. It'll just open everything up for you in MakeCode, ready to go. Okay, this is so, so cool. Yeah. I, I need to get my hands on some of these kits and actually start playing with my daughter with this and maybe try and run a few classes in her school. This is great. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming to Reactor to share, to share with us. Thank you for inviting. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.